Hi, I'm Miles from Chawler Group Go EV, and today we're looking at this, the Kia EV6 GT Line S. So this is the GT Line S. So that's heading towards the top end of the scale for Kia with this model. And we see it's got these 20 inch alloy wheels, uh, which look fantastic, really striking design, this sort of cutter design on the wheel. Moving around, we've got this clamshell bonnet. Under here, we've got access to a frunk with uh, about 100 litres of storage. We've then got these LED running lights down here, and it's got LED matrix headlamps, which look fantastic and also give a really clear view of the road ahead. This black splitter, which runs under the front bumper of the car, gives it a sort of sporty edge, makes it look a little bit more like a GT. Uh, we've got parking sensors all around the car and cameras all around the car as well. There's a camera under the front there under each of the wing mirrors under here so being the gt line s this comes with uh, some extras that you don't get on the gt line so it's got uh, body colored pop-out door handles it's got the panoramic glass roof um, it has these 20 inch wheels as opposed to 19 inch wheels that you get on the gt line moving around the back i love these rear lights i think that this makes a really nice design so this silver bit here these are your indicators so when you, uh, it follows into a, a sort of chrome trim that goes all the way across the back of the car. But when you put the indicators on, these flash orange and look great. Then we've got these LEDs arch going all the way across the back of the car here, forming part of the spoiler. Looks fantastic. Um, and access to the boot under here, plenty of boot space and got a powered boot on this model as well. So under that power tailgate, what we've got inside is a very functional boot so under this load space cover we've got 520 litres of boot space um, that combined with on this rear wheel drive model there's 52 litre frunk underneath the bonnet as well so we can store charging cables and things under there if we want there's also extra storage space under here so you can keep charging cables or wet clothes and things under there if you wish to things you don't need very often but no we've got a really good wide level load space uh, for putting things in um, easy to access and uh, yeah, no, practical for families, really. So under the bonnet here, we've got access to a front trunk and that's got 52 liters of space, which is plenty to put in charging cables um, or maybe, I don't know, winter kit if you want to keep some, you know, some safety kit in the car, a um, little fold up shovel, you know, things like that, a bit of extra blankets and so on can all fit under there and it's not taking up your boot space and rattling around there all the time so that's great on the all-wheel drive model because it'll have a, a motor in the front that's reduced to down to 20 litres but still a usable space that you can put stuff in one thing you also notice at the back corner here if we just push on here we've got access to the charge port so this is motorized flips open uh, inside we've got the type 2 sockets that we we'll use for our standard domestic charging then underneath we've got access to the two uh, extra pins that give you the CCS charger. This rapid charges very, very quickly. Um, we're going to take it out and try it on one of the rapid chargers, see what rate we get. But effectively, this is similar to the Ionic 5, so it'll take like 18 minutes to get from 10% to 80%. So really, really very fast indeed. Pop that down. It's going to close again. So move around and we'll see what it's like on the inside. Kia wants you to feel comfortable in this car, the seat's moving to make me uh, in the right position for how I said it before. Memory for seat function on this as well. Um, so we've got this centre console which juts out with a sort of cantilever design here, uh, massive storage bins under here, uh, we've got USB, USB-C, we've got another USB under there, we've got a 12 volt socket, um, so we've got loads of places we can plug in smart devices and things. Um, this jutting centre console here gives you access to the power button, uh, your drive mode selector, as well as um, also got heated seat and heated steering wheel controls on here as well. So put my foot on the brake and press the power button. So when the car comes on, we've got these fantastic two 12 inch displays up here, panoramic displays, which sort of blend across the dashboard into one big screen that the driver can see very easily. Um, I really like the way that these graphics have been integrated here. So we've got the temperature shown, we've got the battery state of the vehicle, the range, and then we've also got the mapping system uh, for the navigation on the side as well. So it sort of blends all three in, rather than being sort of big blocky tiles, it looks really nice. 
This display up here uh, showing us uh, the current range we've got in the car. We've just got just 84% in the battery and it's saying um, based on normal driving mode, it would be 247 miles of range. Um, based on how it's being driven, it's quite a wet day. We've got the climate control on today. Um, so we've got access on this display here to all the normal car display things. It's also got a whole lot of hidden features which we'll talk about as we're driving. Blind spot monitors and things, cameras that come up on here. So the drive mode button, which changes between eco, normal and sport mode, is just done by tapping on the screen here. Um, I don't know if it's going to come up on the video, but we've got uh, these little blue lights around the dashboard in the, foot, well, in the door bins and things here. And if we press this drive mode button, these change as we uh, press the button. So normal and then sport gives us a, a red glow around the dashboard and around these door bins. Um, so it, just, it, it makes you feel like you're in a sportier car. Um, all of the other controls are very similar. This is quite funky. So this um, control here is dual function. It's got uh, all of the map navigation, etc. controls on here. And if you press this button here, the screens all change and suddenly you've got all of the climate control buttons. So these are all um, haptic touch buttons, um, sort of like a touch screen effectively. Uh, but it means that rather than having loads of buttons all over the place, you just have a nice smooth display. Um, as I say, we've got uh, in, on this being the GT Line S, uh, we've got these vegan leather and uh, sort of Alcantara seats. Uh, these are ventilated and heated, so we've got, uh, for both driver and passenger, we've got ventilation buttons with three speeds, uh, heated with three heating modes, uh, heated steering wheel as well on here. Um, and we've got parking cameras all round. We've also got this panoramic roof, uh, which actually opens and tilts as well. Um, and we've got a heads up display. So inside, as a driver, you're sat into a really, really nice premium feeling car. Uh, can't get over just how high end this vehicle feels. If you've not sat in a Kia for a few years, um, I think you'd be blown away with this. This is really right up there with um, what you'd expect from Jaguar, Mercedes, BMW, etc. So a really, really premium feel. Uh, we've got flappy paddles here, which change the amount of regenerative braking you've got whilst you're driving. Apart from that, basically, you can just get in, press power button, twist it to D for drive, and get on with it. You don't have to um, mess around with lots of features if you don't want to. However, they are there for those that like gadgets and like to play. Let's take a look in the back. So we've got masses of space in the back as well. I mean, these sporty-looking seats still give me loads of leg room. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm 5'11". That seat actually moves back when you open the door, so it is, it's not even in the driving position, and it's actually moved back quite a way. And I've still got, what? five, six inches of legroom there, so that's great. Also, we can see we've got USB-C charging ports on both front driver and passenger seat. And there's also USB under here as well. So you've got an additional charging point under the middle rear seat. So very, very good space, good headroom. Um, armrest with cup holders. Ski hatch through if you want to put long loads through. Um, three headrests, all very, very nice and bright LED lights in the roof as well. So no, very nice place to sit. We've also got um, heated seats in the outers, with this being the GT Line S, we've got heated outer rear seats, which are on buttons for each passenger, driver and passenger um, side. And we've got uh, air vents for the rear passengers as well, so they don't get cooked in the back if, the, if it's a hot sunny day. Um, so yeah, no, great, loads of room in here. Um, really, really like it. So all of the models of Kia EV6 all have the same 77 kilowatt hour battery pack and in the rear wheel drive, which this model is, version, that gives you a range up to about 311 miles. Um, now the rear wheel drive single motor um, version of this car, which this, this has, is 226 brake horsepower, uh, which is plenty. Um, it's still able to um, step the back end out if you floor it around a corner, if you want to be that way inclined. Um, and it certainly accelerates up to the national speed limit very, very quickly indeed. Um, however, if you want a bit more traction, a bit more power, uh, you can go for the all-wheel drive model. Um, it's about £3,000 more expensive than this, um, but then that gives you uh, 321 brake horsepower uh, and the 0 to 60 drops down to about 5.6 seconds. Um, coming next year is the GT model. This is a GT Line S, but don't get that confused with the GT. The GT is all-wheel drive, 577 brake horsepower, 
it'll do 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, which is actually slightly faster than a Lamborghini Huracan. So overall, we've got a great choice of power outputs. I'm perfectly happy with this rear-wheel drive um, GT Line S. 221 horsepower, uh, 26 horsepower, fine for me. That's, that's absolutely fine. I'd probably kill myself if I had the full GT version. Um, but it is good knowing that those of you that that way inclined can certainly put down a little bit more money and get a lot more power. Having a big battery is great, but of course, if you need to charge it, it takes a little bit longer to charge than normally. Well, not so much with the Kia EV6. This has got up to 800 volt charging, as we saw in the uh, Hyundai Ionic 5 and also on the uh, Porsche Taycan. What that means is that this will charge way above uh, 150 kilowatts, which is the limit of these chargers here. So even at 70% battery, we're still pulling 138 kilowatts charge rate. So even this means that the stops that you'll do at the side of the motorway will be a lot faster than if you're in a different electric car with a similar size battery. Um, this really is where the battery technology is increasing and really making a big difference to people in their day-to-day -day driving. The Kia EV6 has got a suite of quite advanced um, safety equipment and help for, help for the driver basically. So we've got um, lane keep assist. So there's like a, on the display here it shows like a green laser pointing at the car in front and it shows the green lanes either side. So what it's doing is using a camera to read the white lines and keep us within the, within the lane centre. Uh, it's also using a radar to measure the distance of the vehicle in front and it's going to speed up and slow down according to that. So if the car in front starts to accelerate it's going to follow it up to the limit I've set which in this case is 70 because we're on the motorway. If uh, the car in front slows down because of traffic the car will slow down and keep a safe distance for you. And what's interesting actually as well is with this with having the heads up display is it actually puts a little sort of blue halo underneath the vehicle that you're following and it moves around on the screen and it, it tracks it very well and if a car goes to overtake you and then cuts in front it will track it as it comes in and you'll see it initially on this display here as like a almost like a moving bar of soap going across the road and then on the heads up display you see the little blue disc follow it across as well um, so it's interesting to sort of see how how much information how much processing power these cars actually have and how much um, calculations they're doing to work out the safest way for you to to make your way down the road. So as I say we've got speed adjusting cruise control, we've got lane keep assist, auto steer, so motorway journeys like this are really really easy to be fair. Um, you just set it to 70 miles an hour, set your distance to the vehicle in front and it'll start accelerating and slow down as you, as you need to. Not a type of thing you want to be using on an A road though, a little or a twisty B road. It's designed for use on multi-lane uh, highways, not for use on um, you know, quite little twisty roads because the speed of the camera is you know, sensing the curves and things, it's looking for white lines in the middle. If, you know, if they suddenly stop painting the white lines, it's not going to work. One of the things this car's got as well is, uh, as I'm just going to indicate you come off on this lane here, it's got lane change assist, so all I need to do is indicate it's going to then slow down slightly and bring me back into the lane completely and, and lock me there so it, 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 it does the lane change for me, I don't really need to steer, all I'm doing is holding the wheel so that it's obviously it senses my input but it, it checks with the cameras, it puts up a, a display on here showing the blind spot to my left um, and it will do that obviously for overtaking as well so that's useful as well on busy motorways that it's got somebody else looking out for you when you're doing those lane changes. So overall, you know, again, packed with technology, packed with features, um, but all intuitive, easy to use and, and simple. So again, if this is the sort of car that you're looking for, you don't need to be a you know, NASA engineer or whatever to be able to um, operate this. It just drives like a normal car, but just one that's just that little bit more cutting edge. So how efficient is it as an electric car? Well obviously it is a big thing, it's got 220 horsepower and it weighs the best part of two tonnes so it is not going to be the most efficient vehicle but having said that we've driven it on a variety of routes today in damp conditions, uh, quite windy today as well um, and we're getting 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour um, as our average um, which sort of calculates out as if the full battery was usable, it'd be around sort of 275-280 miles um, 
So, you know, real, very much a real, realistic, real world sort of mileage is way over 250 miles. Um, and if you're doing a lot more urban driving or driving on country roads, A roads, you will probably see that creep up above 300 miles, particularly in the summer. So I think, you know, realistically, if you were using this vehicle uh, for business purposes or for doing a lot of long distance journeys, 250 miles, so what's that like, four or five hours of driving in the UK um, on a single charge, by which point you'd be probably wanting to take a break, have some lunch or whatever anyway. So um, a very usable car, a very quick to charge car, um, and a very comfortable car. These 20 inch wheels, um, some people might consider that, you know, that often you go for such a big wheel that you sacrifice the ride quality. Not really with this. So this is this 20 inch wheel has still got a 25555 profile tyre. So it's still got quite a chunk of tyre wall on there. Um, so it's quite a comforting ride. Firm, but not overly harsh. Um, it just feels very planted, feels very uh, sure-footed when you're pressing on round corners and things so um, yeah no if you haven't test driven an electric car before if you've not driven a Kia before um, I strongly urge you to come down to our Blackpool branch and test drive the Kia EV6 I really think this could be uh, one of those cars that would make you switch to an electric car if you haven't already done so and if you have driven an electric car before and you're, you know, you know your kilowatt hours, and you know your motors, and you know your charging speeds and things. This is one of the best currently available on the marketplace, um, and it still definitely deserves a strong look. Um, so please come down to our Blackpool branch and let us know what you think.